Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a night of American fantasy. Hands across the sea we started with tonight, a wonderful piece of music, of course, from John Philip Sousa. Um, there's a couple of pieces of music by Sousa this evening, basically because, well, first of all, because I love Sousa March music, who doesn't? And secondly, it belongs to Americana, like American pie, like burger, like donuts. I've got my donut socks on tonight. Have you shown my feet yet, Vanessa? No. Number two, please. Check out the, yeah, check out, I've got my donut socks. Yeah, so we can do the Simpsons. Anyway, yes. Um, away from feet, please. Oh, you have done away from feet. Oh no, I've done something crazy. Ah! What happened there? Oh, we, we both pressed the cut button at the same time. Apparently, apparently I should stop pressing buttons myself and leave that up to the director in the background. She's the expert. She knows what's going on. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the 3rd of July. We're a day early, um, but we don't do Monday. Uh, we don't do Monday streams, so obviously that's not going to happen. Now, we've got all sorts of exciting things tonight. We've had all kinds of, we've had all kinds of requests. We've had all kinds of things, so I've printed out a lot of American goodies here, and we're going to have some fun music this evening. We, of course, have to start. Well, I started there with Hands Across the Sea, a march from Sousa. But if I could ask you all, please, to stand up, take your right hand and place it over your heart like that, and uh, or salute, or, or do what you need to do. Um, do what you need to do. But if you would all please stand for the national anthem. <laughs> There's something amazing about national anthems, isn't there? Um, they're such wonderful compositions. Uh, absolutely wonderful stuff indeed. Thank you. Uh, great fun. Great fun. Now, this evening, I could, I could have used an American organ to do this, but I'm terribly sorry to say we're not using an American organ. We're being international. So my first piece was deliberately hands across the sea because, well, let's face it, we've got a Scottish German organist sitting in the middle of Germany playing American music and I'm using a British organ that was shipped to Australia. So how about that? So um, we're using the Melbourne Town Hall instrument for this part of the program. So um, yeah. Got to have some fun and games. Got to have some fun and games with this. Now, there are many, many pieces of music we can play that have all these exciting... Where's the one I want? There's the one I want. Um, there are all sorts of registrations that this organ is capable of. And um, what's coming up is something that really fits this organ absolutely perfectly. I have to find the right registrations. And here they are here. Oh, wonderful. Um, last night, Saturday night, we had our first private live stream concert, our tuba 
Let me get a tuba quickly. We had our first private tuba live stream last night. Now, unfortunately, a number of people we invited, by invitation only, of course, it's for those of us who support us either generously via PayPal, there's a link to Vanessa, uh, generously via PayPal, and once again, I've got something in my eye, there it is, what was that? Um, or people who, of course, joined us on Patreon, that's the whole point, people who joined us on Patreon at the two-bar level or above. And an invitation was sent out to all of you who um, fulfill those criteria. And um, last night we had our little concert. I think we had, how many people did we have? We feel a lot of my guest on armed. Uh, a few, about 20 turned up. And that's, that's almost right. That's almost the right number that we should have had. But a few people didn't get the link until today. They found it in their spam folders. Or on a couple of case, in a couple of cases, somebody, uh, a couple of people didn't get it because their email addresses have changed. Um, so the email address that I had from you from Patreon uh, was not the same mm. or it's changed over the years or I just have a different email address for you. Sorry, this is really quite annoying now. What on earth is this? Ah, something horrid in my eye. And no, it's not a finger. <laughs> and anyway, and towards the end of last night's concert, um, a couple of people who were there in the audience, I shan't name them because let's face it, these are private individuals. Um, they sent me some bits and pieces, sent me some bits and pieces for, well, first of all, for last night, but also for tonight. And one of them is this absolutely deliciously over-the-top, patriotic, but cheesy piece of music from Irving Berlin. From Irving Berlin. God bless America. Now, Irving Berlin was, Irving Berlin was born in, I think, 18... 1890-something, uh, certainly before the turn of the century, and he made it to pretty much, or did he make it to 100? I can't remember. He was around about 100 when he died. He's a very, very old guy. And this was a piece of music that he actually first composed during the First World War. And then he later sort of redid it a little bit at the end of the 30s, just before the Second World War. Um, and it's, it's, it's delightfully over the top. And if you don't know the original Irving Berlin version, I strongly recommend when you finish watching this tonight, go to YouTube and uh, type in God Bless America, Irving Berlin, Ed Sullivan. And in the 60s, Irving Berlin turned up and sang his own God Bless America on the Ed Sullivan show. I think in the late 60s, 68 or something like that. And it's, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. It's just, it's so wonderfully over the top. You will love it. Anyway. This is what this piece of music can sound like on an organ. Let's find out.
Ah, God bless America with the softer and delicious sounds of this magnificent instrument. Someone's asking in the audience, Jez is asking, I wonder if we'll get Fats Waller. Oh yes, don't you worry. This evening is going to be a mix of this kind of stuff and the more modern American classics. Don't forget the history of American music is the history of modern music. The history of recordings is the history of American music. So, mm. Yes, Derek, uh, some flickering with the screen. Yes, we're having issues with this upstairs camera here. Um, I'm not sure what it is. I think there's a dodgy connection with the cable. Yeah, it's yeah. flickering on. Oh, God, don't touch. Don't touch. Mm -hmm. It's flickering on and off. It's oh, yeah. Well, sh shoot. Oops. Hold on. Excuse me. I shall stand up and do this. <clears throat> you see, this, it's, the, it's the iPhone on a overhead camera here with all sorts of adapters and funny things and for some reason oh god what have I done now huh what come dust in here okay. Okay. is a kasten is das normal da um den preview window yeah. guck mal das ist ein kasten yeah, darum ist das immer so bist du sicher moment Okay, okay, we might have solved the problem. The problem has been solved. Now, while we're on the subject of uh, nice music like that, nice cheesy music like that, there is, of course, a wonderful piece of music that gets sung at all sorts of great American events. It's called America the Beautiful, and that's coming later. That's coming later, and uh, yeah. Um, I personally love the Ray Charles version of that. But over the years, of course, um, everyone's gone completely crazy with, um, with um, all sorts of other versions of it. And at things like Super Bowls, people come on and really overdo it, overdo it. In America, we don't just have a national anthem. You also have a presidential anthem, and it's called Hail to the Chief. And it's the presidential anthem of the United States of America. And it's so wonderfully over the top. I love it. I, it would be great just to be president for a day, just to have this played. It would be wonderful. You know what it's like? If you, if you know it, sing along. Sorry, we're having technical issues in the background here tonight, but everything seems to be working in the background, so that's the important thing. Everything okay? Everything okay. Vanessa's giving us a big thumbs up. Wonderful. 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 Oh my goodness, everyone's being very generous tonight. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you to, thank you to everyone. Vanessa's doing her best to keep it up with everyone. 
and everything that's going on in the background. So uh, bear with us. Things are working. Good, 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 good. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this magnificent instrument here is just, it's so over the top. It's so over the top. And I can't get, still can't get over the fact that I have this amazing piece of kit here that I can touch. Woohoo! And it does what I need it to. I want that and that and then, oh my goodness, all of that. No, we don't need that. We need that, that and that. Yep, that's fine. Um, and uh, it's wonderful. I love technology. I love technology. Can you imagine how weird the world would have been if... In the 1800s, all those people didn't leave Scotland and Ireland and go to America. Because let's face it, if it wasn't for the Scottish, nothing would ever have been invented. No telephone, no television, no rainproof clothing, etc., etc. If it wasn't invented by a Finnish person, it was probably invented by a Scottish person. So there you are. Anyway, yes, I'm allowed to say these things, so I hope you don't mind. Um, being Scottish. Hmm? Jake Brewer. Jake has been a member of the channel for two years. Yes, well done, Jake. How are you doing? Look at that. Jake is here. Jake has, we've, there's a little message. If you're a channel member here on YouTube, um, you get to send messages with fancy little things behind your name. As you see, Jake has an orange star. Wonder what that means. Um, it probably means he's been a member for two years. So there you are. Uh, wonderful. So Wolfgang Koenig has one of those. Adrian Morris has one of those. Who else is here tonight? Alexander Wunderlich has one of those. Uh, Dominic Eckhart has one of those. Jerry Martin has one of those. All of these people have one of these things behind their names. If you're a channel member on YouTube, but don't worry about it. You can be a Patreon member as well and enjoy the treats and excitement. <laughs> Let's have a fanfare. Aaron Copland was one of, if not the most famous, American composer of his time. And um, Aaron Copland wrote lots of wonderful, wonderful music. And uh, I think this is his most famous composition. It's the fanfare for the common man. Who is the common man? Well, theoretically, all of us are the common man especially in America. America was originally designed to be a classless society. That worked out well, didn't it? Um, but yes, we're not going to get political tonight. That would be very dangerous. Um, not going to do that. Mm. But yes, uh, so fanfare for the common man. And this should be played on tubas. And because tubas aren't loud enough, we have fanfare trumpets as well. This organ has just got the lot. It's wonderful. Enjoy. I'm going to sight read for you a arrangement. Uh-oh. Uh, that's always a bad word. Arrangement of the fanfare for the common man. Wish me luck.
loud stuff, isn't it? That's loud. Um, it's not the full arrangement, is it? There's something missing there towards the end. There are a couple of bars missing, I recognise that. That's one of the first pieces of music I conducted when I had an orchestra. Um, I had, I've had various music groups over the years and I've had a couple of orchestras and one of the first things we got to do was this. And uh, yeah, um, it's, um, it's quite difficult to uh, conduct, first of all, because of all the long notes for your brass players to do. And also the rhythms, it doesn't sort of fit a normal rhythm like you would expect yeah, it to. Rien? Colonel Ryan, where are you this evening? Is Rien nicht da? Nee. Rien, are you not with us this evening? Nein. Rien, I was talking to Rien this afternoon. Where is Rien and why is he not here? <laughs> Vanessa is suggesting maybe he hears too much to iron. That's a possibility. I certainly hope that's not the case. Poor guy. Reen, are you there? And if so, why aren't you in the chat? Now, American history is a wonderful thing. And um, if we go a long, long way back, then America, you know, was under the hands of other places. Let's put it like that. And for a while, they had a different national anthem. And it's a national anthem you might recognize from another country. I shall say no more.
<laughs> I knew it, I knew it. Borden Zehorn, I knew it, was going to say, if you're going to play that, then you have to play the Charles Ives version. Well, I will play the Charles Ives version, but I'm not going to play the Charles Ives version on or around the 4th of July because the Charles Ives version was, and excuse my French, a complete piss take on America, on the piece of music. I was, it was taking the mickey out of the piece of music. So, and I'm definitely not going to do that for this because that would be very cheeky indeed. What registrations do I have here? Well, these are correct, yes. But yes, those are the correct ones. They're working fine. Joshua, state the battle hymn of the Republic im heutigen Programm. Joshua, oh yes. <laughs> and we're getting to that, we're getting to that, because we're moving back to that time in American history. And films were made about that time in American history. I'm not going to go any more than that. <laughs>
Uh huh. See, see, see the wonderful director in the background saying, "Don't you press buttons? That's my job." And then she doesn't press buttons. <laughs> Mrs. Gartshaw. I said finished. I said I'm finished. I beg your pardon. I don't know what that is. Who ha who said that? I don't know. Right, there we are. That was a medley of tunes from yesteryear. I think that's the only way to describe that. Oh, I have that twice. Why do I have that twice? So we had When Johnny Comes Marching Home. We had the Battle Hymn of the Republic. We had Yankee Doodle Boy from George M. Cohan, the same guy who wrote That Grand Old Flag that we had right at the beginning. There you are. You're a grand old flag. Which was, I suppose, in earlier, that's a, uh, you know the film, the grand old, well, it wasn't, what was it? it was the film called Yankee Doodle Dandy, wasn't it? With James Cagney, who um, everyone says, come on, what does everyone say about James Cagney? Someone say it in the chat. James Cagney has a catchphrase connected to James Cagney. That he never actually ever said. So there you are. Uh, <laughs> does anyone know what I'm talking about? I'm sure you do. Here, have some paper. Thank you very much indeed. Um, no one? No one know what James Cagney's catchphrase was? No? Nobody? Nobody? Come on, folks. Someone's got to know. Someone's got to know. You dirty rat. There we are. There it is. Uh, let me get that in. Brooks. Well done. And C James Cagney never said that in any film at all. He never said that. Jez said it as well. You curdy bread. No, he never said that, apparently. So there you are. Ken said it as well. Who said it? Mike got it. Vanessa, can, can you get all of those in, please? Thank you. Yes. It's one of those catchphrases that um, people misquoted over the years. Um, it's like in Dirty Harry, he doesn't say, do you feel lucky punk? He doesn't do that. And so on and so on. Um, or, or Robert De Niro in Taxi Driver, you're looking at me. Uh, he doesn't say that. He says other things. Anyway, anyway, I digress. I digress. Now, at the beginning of this evening, I played a piece of music by John Philip Sousa. And somewhere in my pile of goodies here, ah, there it is, I have another. Oh, I have two more pieces by John Philip Sousa. And one of them is not only famous for being a wonderful American piece of music. Are these the right registrations? They are, believe it or not. Uh, one of them is also very famous for being the theme tune to a British comedy series. Conrad Poos and his amazing dancing teeth. Does that mean anyone to any? Does that mean anything to anyone? Conrad Poos and his amazing dancing teeth. Teeth. As soon as I play the first few notes, you will know exactly what I'm talking about. Wish me luck. This is sight reading.
the Liberty Bell March. Isn't that great fun? Ha <laughs> ha! Wonderful fun. Wonderful fun. I love playing this kind of stuff. I love this music. I, for a while, for four years roughly, I was conductor of a, a symphonic wind orchestra and we did all this kind of stuff and it was, it was marvellous fun. Um, I wanted to, I wanted to do much more of this kind of stuff, you know, real sort of old fashioned Sousa marches and military music. I love that kind of stuff. And, um, well, I wasn't allowed to. Mm. So there we are. Now, perfect timing, ladies and gentlemen, the first hour of this evening's program, the first hour is coming to a close and on time. We're pretty much on time. Obviously, I didn't do too much talking tonight. This is great because this was planned. This was the program. <gasps> Amazing. Uh, yeah, we're going to stick to John Philip Sousa for the end of this. And this is something I tried playing last night. This was a piece of music sent to me. Um, was it sent actually? Haben die das gestern Abend so geschickt oder hast du das rausgeholt gestern Abend? Ach, du hast das rausgesucht. Oder haben die das geschickt? Ich The plot thickens. Um, last night during our private stream, um, Cameron Platz, Cameron is here tonight, isn't he? Cameron is here tonight with uh, Christian as well. They both requested this piece of music last night. Wolfgang Koenig, thank you very much. Um, they requested this piece of music last night and Vanessa picked this version, picked, picked this version out of the interweb, um, this version here. And um, I meant today to look for a more organic version of it to play on the organ, but I didn't. Um, so I'm going to play this one again. I sight read this last night and we kind of got through it. There was a chord in the middle that I couldn't work out. And it was that. And it goes there. What could this be? Haha, -ha, I had to practice that. What could that be, I wonder? Well, it might be this. John Philip Sousa's most famous composition, The Stars and Stripes Forever. And I'll see if I get it right tonight. <laughs>
<laughs> Somewhere out there, there's an arrangement of that for the, um, where you do, hold on, let me turn the registration down a little bit. You do this all with one hand. Um. You do all that with one hand and the left hand. Um. This kind of. And that frees up your right hand to do the, all that kind of fluty piccolo-y stuff. I couldn't find a version of that for the organ to do it, so I do apologize, but at some point I will do that. <laughs> Difficult stuff, I'm sure. Thank you. Uh-oh. We have, oh. Okay, we have a surprise. I love surprises. What? Dominic Eckhart. Oh, hello, Dominic Eckhart. Und Ursa und also Ursa und ich sehen sich so gerne konzentriert. Und Ursa, uh, ooh, a march, a march, a march, a march. We like marches. Um, the National Emblem March by Edwin Eugene Bagley. Oh my goodness, I do not know Edwin Eugene Bagley. He died in 1922, so 100 years ago, there we are, so 100th anniversary of the death of Eugene, or Edwin Eugene Bagley. Let's sight read then, thank you, Let's sight read his National Emblem March. Oh my goodness, where's the melody? Oh my god, the melody's in the pedals! I do not know this. Oh my goodness. All right, well, we'll give it a go. Um, so this was a re request by Dominic Eckhart. Mm -hmm. A request by Dominic Eckhart. And um, the torture involved is a pastime from Vanessa and Urza Maior, who both love watching me concentrate, apparently. So here we are. This is me concentrating. Uh, Oh my god. All right, let's give it a go. Sight reading, here we go.
cool. What an amazing piece of music. Thank you, Dominic Eckhart. All right, we're keeping that. I like that. I love that kind of stuff. Yeah, cool. I like it. All right, we're having some of that. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much indeed. Now, ladies and gentlemen, for the second half of this evening's magnificence, we are going to press click. And... I don't know why. Shall we do a German night? It's a Monday, so the Sunday night then. Wer hat gefragt? Gleiswanderer. Our friend Gleiswanderer just asked, are we, what are we going to do for, for the, um, well, it's not German independence, I wouldn't call that, but uh, um, um, German unification on the 3rd of October. That's a Monday. Much like tomorrow in America is the um, national holiday. Um, in Germany, the Unification Day on the 3rd of October, that will be a Monday this year. So on the Sunday night, the 2nd of October, we shall then do, we shall then definitely do some fun stuff as well. Definitely do some fun German stuff on that night as well. Now, let me see, can I get this? Oh, yeah, that should actually work. Yeah, that should definitely work. Let's... Uh, yeah, we'll keep it at that. <laughs> One of the greatest inventions, musical inventions, of the Americas is, of course, the theatre organ, the cinema organ. It was actually kind of invented in the UK. It was a British guy called Robert Hope Jones who got fed up of working in England and went off to America um, to do his thing. And Robert Hope Jones signed up with a guy called Rudolf Wurlitzer. And they, of course, turned into one of the most lucrative um, partnerships around. Eventually, they got fed up of Hope Jones, kicked him out, and uh, yeah, uh, well, it went on to do their wonderful things. But the innovations in the organ world um, led to these amazing things, this um, cinema organs, theater organs, whatever you want to call them. And it's great because you can play anything you want on these. What, what registrations did I just choose there? Well, I didn't want them, I wanted these. That's more like it. That's more like it. Right. Now then, the wonderful world of theatre organs is great for anything modern, anything fun. And um, I'm going to play some more light-hearted American music now. And we're going to start with this crazy little number that has been used many, many times over the years. Actually, it started our life as a bit of a sort of a protest, um, but it became so popular it sort of turned into, turned into a popular thing. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to part two of our concert this evening, where we are going to be theatre organing um, for the rest of the evening and uh, playing some more popular music, some jazzy stuff, some bluesy stuff. We'll have some Gershwin, we'll have some Duke Ellington, we will, have, of course, have some Fats Waller. We will have some Leonard Bernstein, we will have some Don McLean, we might even have some John Denver, and um, we're going to have some Woody Guthrie as well.
this land is your land. And all sorts of fun games you can have with that. A wonderfully crazy piece of music to have fun with. Now, while we're on the subject of having music to have fun with, let's see if this will work on a theatre organ. It might not. I might have to change the registrations there. I don't know if you noticed this. This is something that my friends in the Hauptwerk world may have to help me with. Some registrations are very slow. When you play really rhythmic stuff like that, it doesn't work for some reason. Let's try it again. See what this sounds like this. I want to be in America. Okay, by me in America. Everything free in America. Apparently. Fun stuff indeed. Right, Leonard Bernstein's America from West Side Story. Now, let's get into the wonderful world of Duke Ellington. Duke Ellington, and the piece of music I'm looking for is a wonderful piece of music. I'm going to play two pieces of music based around this magnificent city. One of them by Duke Ellington, and one of them by a guy called W.C. Handy, which means, which, what was his name? William Christopher Handy. It did not mean that there was a toilet nearby, which is what one might assume for something called W.C. Handy. Get it? Ha ha ha. Anyway, um, Duke Ellington, first of all, in 1926, Duke Ellington was in the midst of his heyday. 
having a whale of a time with his orchestra, not a big band, he called it an orchestra. And um, Duke Ellington had invented something called the jungle music style. This was a big thing in the Apollo Club up in Harlem at a table for two. There were four of us, me, your big feet and you. Um, that's a Fats Waller song, maybe we'll do that later. Your feet's too big. No, anyway, up in Harlem at the Apollo Theatre, Duke Ellington was reigning wild. It was either Duke Ellington or Cab Calloway. Cab Calloway came slightly later, but Duke Ellington was the one to do. And this piece of music, together with his friend Bubba Miley, they came up with this composition called the East St. Louis Toodaloo. St. Louis, Toodaloo, which is a great piece of music indeed 
from Mr. Duke Ellington. Now, this must be something rather wonderful about the city of St. Louis, or St. Louis, however you want to pronounce it. And um, I'm not sure, are the people of St. Louis, do they say St. Louis with S or do they say St. Louis without it? I'm not sure. Anyone from St. Louis or St. Louis, do please tell me. There's a wonderful piece of music this was requested recently by Ken Molden, I think, wasn't it? The St. Louis Blues? Ken requested the St. Louis Blues recently. Ken requested Stars and Stripes Forever this evening, too. But when you've got a theatre organ like this, you have to do some bluesy music as well. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, we hope you are having a wonderful evening tonight. If you are, then don't forget. It's the beginning of the month, which means you can dig deep, deep, deep into your little pockets and help us out with your generous donations. Thank you very much indeed. That was a message, by the way, from the director in the background. I would never say a thing like that. The St. Louis Blues.
The St. Louis Blues, as played by Eli Porter in every big band he's ever played in. Nice one. What big bands have you played in, Mr. P? Uh, tell us more. What instrument did you play in your big band? Uh, in your big bands? I've played in various big bands all over my lifetime as well. And uh, yeah, had all sorts of fun doing it while we were at it. Now then, now then, now then, now then, to the world of George Gershwin. We have to play wonderful music by George Gershwin. George Gershwin is like um, Irving Berlin, one of, hold on, I'm going the wrong way, is definitely one of the most famous, oh there it is, one of the most famous composers of all time. Um, he composed jazz music, he composed musical music, he composed opera music, he composed orchestral music, classical music, if you want to call it. He composed everything and he was quite simply a rather wonderful, wonderful, wonderful composer. He died at a very, very early age. Um, great shame. He died of a rotten brain tumour that got him at a very early age, which was rather horrible. For sure. Das habe ich schon gespielt. Aber es ist das. Nee, das ist was ganz anderes. Ah, das ist ein anderer Arrangement. Wer genau, hat das geschickt? Ken, Ken hat das gefunden. Mm -hmm. Hey, Ken, thank you. Ken has found a new arrangement of the Stars and Stripes. So we'll, I'll practice that and play that at some point through the week. Let's continue then with our friend Mr. George Gershwin. I'm going to play a few Gershwin numbers here. We're going to start with Perfect for this time of year, this part of, in this part of the world at least. Um, from Porgy and Bess, the most famous tune of them all, Summertime.
Summertime, a very bluesy, bluesy number from George Gershwin. Another lovely, beautiful ballad from George Gershwin is this. It's even more gentle. And you have to finish it with that little, <laughs> that lovely little click from the vibraphone at the end. A theatre organ would not be a theatre organ without all these cheesy bits and pieces. Now then, well, let us under a gentleman. We need to speed things up towards the end of this evening. By the way, Alexander Wunderlich said it earlier this evening. What's about the CDs? Ta-da! There they are. That's the old one, piping hot at the organ. That's the new one, Fraser Gartshaw's Organ Works. They look similar. That was the plan. Um, um, you know, continuity. And um, all the people that supported us at the beginning of the project, they've all been sent out around the world. And they should kind of be there for now. I know we've had problems getting them to the UK and to the US, that's customs now in those days, but the rest of them should be heading there soon, which means I can very soon be opening them to the general public 
to be purchased. How exciting. So that's good. So finally, after a long, 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 long wait, the uh, CDs are finally uh, there. Don't forget, the wonderful world of American music is not just classical music, not just march music, not just jazz music. It can also be folk sort of music, maybe even country music, something along those lines. Let's see what this sounds like on a theatre organ. This could be interesting. Country Roads from John Denver. I wonder has that ever been played on a theatre? I'm sure it has. I'm sure people have played that on a theatre organ before. They must have done. They absolutely must have done. Now, obviously, we have something rather exciting for the closing number for this evening's concert tonight. But we have to. We absolutely have to do something that people seem to request quite a lot 
on the organ. And um, this is definitely something that came out of America over the years. Now, the history of jazz is ragtime. I played that a few nights ago, so I'm not going to play that again. And we had lots of ragtime music. Ragtime music is wonderful stuff. Let's play another piece of ragtime music that we have played here before. I'm going to play it very fast. Um, the copyright kings always get this one for some reason, but it um, doesn't matter tonight. There's going to be lots of copyright here. By the way, what does that mean? A copyright claim on a video on YouTube means that the poor performer gets zip from YouTube for this. So that's why we keep asking for the generous donations on the side, because um, when we get our um, copyright claims, um, we get nothing. All the copyright goes to all the copyright owners around the world. That's tough, that's life, but hey, that's fair. If I was the copyright owner and someone was playing my music, I think I'd want a cut of that as well, don't you think? See if you recognize this. The wonderfully entitled Temptation Rag. That laid way to the music of gems like Mr. Thomas Fats Waller.
That was Ain't Misbehaving and Willow Tree from Thomas Fats Waller. Bit of fun. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to finish this evening's performances. Now we're cooking, says Gerald Long. Well, Gerald Long, yes, we are indeed cooking, which means it's time to go into the kitchen, turn the oven on and do some baking. And if we're going to be doing some baking, then there's one thing we need, and that is something from a recipe from Mr. Don McLean.
The Day the Music Died. Ladies and gentlemen, that was our American night this evening. I hope you enjoyed yourselves as much as we did. Vanessa and I had a great time tonight. Vanessa, did we have a good time tonight? Oh, apparently we had, we had such a good time tonight, we're going downstairs now to have some tiramisu. Tiramisu late at night is a great invention. Um, tiramisu is, of course, an Italian breakfast dish, which means we eat it at midnight. Ha, there you are. So that's my reward for this evening's concert. I hope you had as much uh, fun with our... I don't know if you can hear noises in the background. Our dog has woken up and he's snorting about in the background, having fun. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. We hope you had a wonderful evening, as much fun, like I say, as we did. Uh, thank you very much for your generous donations. Thank you for turning up. Thank you for your thumbs up. Thank you for hitting the subscribe button. Thank you for just being generally wonderful at all times. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. See you very soon again. Mm -hmm.